Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be each and every Sunday night, where tonight we kick off season 24 of Sunday Night Lights with round one from uh, Summit Point this evening. Free track to kick off the season. Big bumper crop of people here tonight, but I am flying solo. My partner in crime, uh, the chaotic one, has a bit of chaos in his life at the moment. And his mic's playing up and uh, he's in the crowd tonight rather than uh, with me here for the racing. But we do have a bunch of people here to race with tonight. So we're going to get on with it and check out a lot of the action. So... First up tonight, uh, 4,500 soft or just thereabouts to open us up in the season. Whoop, wrong one. Buttons are plenty. I'll just get a bit of volume there for the cars. All right, we're joined. Number one plated here tonight. It's Mr. Manu Liketa. Great to see big breaks himself back in the Mivano livery here, joining us once again on a Sunday night. Two plated car here tonight, Sam Kuiturt. Uh, he's joining us again for another crack this season, which is great. Julian O'Frey in the three car tonight. Uh, the red face racing livery on full display once again. Giuseppe Tellini from Italy, he's back. He's in the four-plated car. Ludwig Gidi. Uh, I was thinking, no, it's double I. It's not his main account, unfortunately, but he's wearing the Mavano livery. So Mavano out in force tonight. They're two top skippy drivers at the moment here to put on a show. The six-plated car here tonight, got his eye rating up a bit, is the Japanese driver of Gol Kawabe, Kawabe-san, uh, in the, uh, the now somewhat familiar grey and white livery that he's been sporting for the last season or so. He's the six-plated car, and he's worked on his eye rating. Well done, sir. Danny Blanco, the seven, one to watch. If he can qualify well tonight, uh, he'll be uh, certainly one to watch. Seven is Loris Amadio, who from memory came third overall in the season just gone, season 23. He's uh, rated or seeded just ahead of the Iberian Racing School's uh, Christian Perez. Great to see uh, Christian back. And I might just, uh, there we go, actually put some names on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Sam Devante, the cowboy himself for Speedy Snails. Uh, he's out there as car number 10. Apparently he's on uh, provisional pole too with a 21.8. Decent time around here for Quali, that's for sure. Uh, the 11 plated car here tonight as we continue going through our field. George Matuszynski joins us once again. Great to see George back for another tilt at the title. 12, uh, Alvaro Reyno, uh, new to the series. I don't remember Alvaro joining us previously, uh, but certainly looking to mix it with the top guns here tonight. Nathan Wade from UK and I. He's joined us once again. We saw him towards the tail end of last season. Great to see him back having another crack at the title. Uh, the 14th plated driver. Where's he gone? He's hiding somewhere. There he is. Mr. Fidge Johnson. The boys forever. There he is looking cool, calm and collected. Haven't seen him uh, much out and about in the skips so far this season. Uh, but he's out there uh, as the... Well, he's a second placed um, <laughs> ANZ driver. As I'm just looking at our next driver, Russell Clark, the third for Team Milo. The Team Milo boss man out there having a crack as the times start tumbling. Vico now, 21.5. Tolini at the top of the pops now with a 21.4 as these guys start doing their second laps. Uh, and they're getting on with it big time. Oh, I'm just trying to see if there's anyone left doing a lap. No, that's everyone. Oh, I was running through everyone quietly, minding my own business, and they've all finished, uh, finished their, <laughs> finished their lap. So, uh, but that's good. Uh, we've got a bumper crop. Look at that. The top 16. We had. Um, we've got 18 here tonight, actually, by the looks. I think. Uh, but the top 16 there, separated by less than a second. That's what you call quality racing ahead of us tonight folks that's for sure um we had about seven splits of drivers turn up for the opening round free track helps with that of course and a bumper soft as has been noted in the uh in the crowd of 45 82 but that does mean that we've lost some of our regulars a couple of team milo boys in the second split uh fighting their way to get their crack 
back at the main event in the weeks to come. Might just take the chance while we're uh, while we're waiting for Quali to finish to note that this season uh, we're going to we're teaming up with the Locked On iRacing Racing podcast boys. We're going to be um, doing a, a race recap uh, and a championship sort of overview each week. Just a small segment in the midst of their results. Uh, podcast they put out each Wednesday so keep an eye out for that folks um, and just another thing that we're bringing uh, in partnership with the Locked On Boys to add a bit of uh, flavour and interest to the racing here each and every week which is fantastic we're really pleased to be doing that and looking forward to seeing how that um, comes in or comes develops over the season I'm just checking to see yeah, Luketa sitting on pole as we just watch the last few seconds uh, come to a close. Should be a, uh, a massive race tonight to open the season. Uh, certainly the warm-up race was spectacular. The pack racing up front was dramatic and intense. So uh, looking forward to seeing how the big guns who've come out to play here tonight uh, tackle this very familiar track uh, at uh, Summit Point here. Uh, and um, the guys are uh, no doubt looking to put on a great show. Oh, and Licata is in the chat. It's not Luketa, it's Licata, number seven there, seated there, or at least uh, in the uh, in the lineup after Quali. Great to see him in there too. I've seen him around the traps. Be great to see what he can do out there, rubbing shoulders and elbows with the big boys here tonight. His first race with us here on a Sunday night uh, and looking forward to seeing how he goes. Uh, our leading ANZ driver at the moment will be starting out of P6, the Cowboy, Sam Devantia. Check him out, the Cowboy 99 on Twitch. He'll be live streaming at the moment, as will some of our drivers here tonight. Many of our drivers actually often stream. So as Corley ticks over, we might take a look at our grid for round one here of Sunday Night Lights for season 24 at uh, Summer Point. Manu Luketa, big breaks himself from Ivano Sim Racing. He's joined us once again with his main account. Great to see him back, and I'm sure he'll put on a great show starting from P1. Giuseppe Tolini from Italy, his compatriot. He's out of P2. Alexis Vico from Iberia out of third tonight. That's the highest I've seen him start for a while. Great uh, great effort from uh, Vico there. Gael Kawabe from Japan. Two tenths off the lead, but he's starting for the second row. Sensational. No Nagai here tonight. Kawabe-san leading the way for the Japanese drivers. Kuito for Racecraft Esports. He's out of fifth tonight. Expect to see him move forward. Giving the half an opportunity. P6 tonight for Speedy Snails driver Sam Devantia. He starts from six off the grid tonight. As we said, Manu, Manuel Licata, this time from Italy. Uh, he's out of seventh off the grid. Nathan Wade from UK and I. He starts eighth. Fifth row of the grid tonight, George Maddock from UK and I. And Ludwig Gidi, the other Mivano Sim Racing driver, starting much further down the field than we would expect. Expect him to move forward. Alvaro Reno out of 11th. Josh Fitz Johnson. Uh, the boys forever out of 12th. Going over the page, 13th, Lotto Samadio from Italy. Danny Blanco from Iberia out of 14th, 15th. Christian Perez. Expect him to move forward. George Matsushinsky similarly out of 16th. Julian O'Frey out of 17th. And Russell Clark, the third final driver in this field. He's starting from 18th. Only six seconds off the pace, if you can believe it. Fantastic effort, but uh, that's how tight it is here at the top, folks, as we just wait for the final countdown uh, before we get underway. The final driver has taken his marks, and we're just about to do exactly that. As the red lights mean rev. Green lights mean go, and we're away for season 24 of Sunday Night Lights as Fred the Flag Marshal vigorously waves the green flag off there in the distance and the drivers race down to turn one for lap one of this magnificent event to kick us off for this season. Too wide they go throughout the field. They seem to have managed it all. Fantastic racing to begin kick us off here. A couple of sniffs are three wide, but too wide they go and they've managed to make it work like... Not so many have done this week, I'm sure. We've seen plenty of action here this week. As they head through turn three now, how many will use the extra runoff there? 
couple picking up the incident points in the background. Uh, but everyone so far getting cleanly through the opening sectors of the course. Oh, there's a couple down the back here who are making it interesting. Still two by two they go. Almost three wide through the turn five hairpin. First on, oh, and around goes the eight car of Loris Amadio. He's got a touch in the rear. He's hung on to it. Doesn't look to be carrying too much damage. Just a bit of wounded pride out of that one. Julian O'Fray, the three-plated car, otherwise would be last on this opening lap. That's incredible. Not often you see that, let me tell you. As we jump back up the front now, we've got Luketa leading the way from uh, Vico, Tallini and Kuitut. Koabi-san's lost one spot off his starting position, but hanging on to a top five. That would be an outstanding result for what is now the leading Japanese driver after Nagai-san. I don't know if he's hung up his uh, his driving gloves or what, but he's not here tonight to uh, to go try and go that one better this season after finishing second in the SNL points last season. Kawabe, though, standing in and doing a great job, although he lost another position there, I think. No, he's in six. He's just... No, yeah, he's down two positions from where he started. So not looking to go backwards is Kawabe son, although he's got some hot talent behind him in Ludwig Gidi as, once again, the guys kick up dirt out of turn three. Uh, you can afford to do that, but only a few times because you run out of points and get disqualified eventually as the guys come down into the turn five hairpin once again. It's a decent passing opportunity there as we see Gidi having a big look through there, just as I say that, uh, on Koabe san but Koabe managing to hold on to that P6 for all he is worth as it's Luketa now still leading the way. Surprised we didn't see a bit of a shuffle there because down the main straight, of course, Whoa, is off in the background. We see a couple go flying. It looks like, yeah, it was uh, it was Devantia or Gidi and Wade, potentially. Definitely Gidi went wide uh, and possibly Devantia, was it? Uh, no, it was Matic. Matic and uh, Gidi went wide there. But I'm surprised we haven't seen more uh, movement and shuffling of positions here at the front. Looks like Vico's happy to let uh, Luketa take it. Uh, and there's not a lot of movement in these positions, honestly. I was expecting a bit more. Perhaps it'll heat up a little bit uh, further down the track. See Christian Perez dropping down the order. Looks like he's had a bit of a, a moment there at turn one. I wonder if he had any help. Why don't we go check it out? See what happened. No, he's just overcooked it, has the Spaniard. Uh, World-class driver, Mr. Perez. So uh, we expect him to continue the fight from back there in uh where is he now he's right down the back in 17th he started in 15th and not coming forward like we might have otherwise expected as meanwhile up the front we have luketa still continuing to lead this one and uh vico really happy just to sit in behind interesting Lukata now up to p5 ahead of koabe still kui turt very racy uh, individual there. He's, uh, I expect him to be sort of pushing the pace at some stage soon. But at the moment, line stern they go. Tell you what, this is nothing like the warm-up race. At the warm-up race, they were two by two anywhere they could stick their skippies, let me tell you. Or well, now, here we go. This is where it's going to start to come. Vico said, enough's enough. I want to run this show for a little while. Perhaps he saw the two by two behind and felt a bit threatened. Side by side they go this time round, Vico clear of Luketa and Kui Turt now. He has made that move that I was expecting to come. Tallini now behind. Oh, is Tallini wearing a new livery? I thought he might have the Mavano livery on, but no, he doesn't. The four car, uh, it looks like a new livery, that's for sure, but it, I thought it might be uh, one of Mavano, the famous Italian racing team. Got a couple of Mavano boys here tonight, but uh, Tallini, not one of them. The leading Mavano driver, of course, the one-plated uh, Luchetta, as we heard a bit of crunching in the background. One seems to have got away okay. Um, we can see uh, Luchetta, the leading Mavano racer, his teammate, here tonight is, of course, Ludwig Gidi, and he's up three positions to be down in seventh, though. Uh, and still in that lead pack, which, if I'm honest, the lead pack leads all the way down to George Maddock in uh, P10. 
uh, before there's a break in draft. You can see that long trail of skippies there. Danny Blanco, who in the warm-up race shown that he can bridge a gap. It's just whether or not the guys with him, around him, uh, Rene, uh, Alvaro, Matushinsky and uh, O'Fre are going to work with him. Kui Turt this time, three wide into turn one. They get it done and Kui Turt, as I said, he's a racy young man. And he gets it done into turn one. I think he had a bit of help from his friends, though, if I'm honest. Uh, uh, Lucetta and Vico obviously determining that discretion was the better part of Valor that time round. Oh, I was off in the background. I'm going to bet that was Kawabe, son. Oh, Blanco looking to avoid him. That, well, that's those guys. They're no hope now of uh, catching up. Let's see what happened to... Uh, to Gawa uh, Kawabe there. He came back on after about uh, six seconds off track here. What's going on here? Oh, he's copped a bit of a rub there from uh, Gidi. Uh, and both of them have spewed off the track there. Don't know if there was net code, but two by two they went to try and get into uh, turn three there, and she did not work. Now buried deep in the pack is Kawabe. He's down 11 positions in 15th. As we jump back up the front this time round, coming through the final corner, Kui Turt has worked hard. He's up four positions in that front pack to lead them on the uh, tail end of lap five. And look at that, straight away, taking the defensive position. This this pack now is, uh, what's that? It's nine deep now after the loss of Kawabe. Side by side they go. He doesn't want to get buried in it, though. Uh, that's, that's what uh, that defensive line says to me about Kui Turt, as he lets uh, Lucetta go through, but wasn't interested in, in Vico or Tolini following him through. The deeper you go in that pack, the harder it is to progress as the laps tick by. Great to see leading ANZ driver here tonight, Mr. Cowboy himself, uh, Sam Devantia. He's still in this lead pack. He started six. He's only down the one spot in seventh, but certainly... Uh, right in there as he closed that gap uh, that looked like it might open a little bit into the braking zone there at turn five fantastic effort from from him this second pack is getting very busy plenty of two by two into the braking zone there the lone uh is that a milo car there who am i missing oh, of course it is it's uh, russell clark the third he's in last place Team Milo Bossman wants to make a move from there. He's got Fitz Johnson a couple ahead of him and Amadio splitting them. Not the start that any of those guys would have wanted uh, for this round one, season 24. As we come up to the tail end of lap six, back with our leaders. Luketa, Kui Turt and Vico. How's the dice going to roll out this time? Uh, it's three wide, if you don't mind. Again, Kui Turt pulls. Yeah, he took the defensive line there. Still lost two positions. That's what the draft's worth here. Three by three wide, are they going to go? No, just the two, as we see. Look at the pace of Perez. Now, we saw him have a massive off earlier, uh, and he's still managing to lead this secondary pack. Uh, as up the front, two wide, they go through turn three. So that, uh, yeah, it was Kui Turt going past Vico. Or at least having a go. And he's showing the nose again. Kui Turt wanting to really take the action here in the front pack. And I'm hearing crunching in the background. I don't see any skippies going off anywhere. They've gone all right, though. They've got through there. Matushinsky and Blanco swapping positions at the hairpin that time round. Blanco coming up on the inside of Matushinsky through the S's out the back at 7, 8, and 9. Can he get it done? And it looks like someone's looking to follow him as well. No, nah, but they fall back into line as... Uh, Alvaro, he's uh, he's stuck in behind Matsushinsky, and they'll uh, they'll stay line astern for the the remainder of this lap by the looks until they roll the dice again at turn one next time round. Two by two now the leaders go as they run down the front straight. Kui Turt says this time he wants to lead. What's uh, Vico going to do? Is he going to tuck in behind? He is. He's going to sit in behind Gidi. And watch, uh, it's, uh, sorry, sitting behind Lucetta and watch Gidi go around the outside. Getting the Mivano boys mixed up, I am, at this stage. Dropping back now, Perez leading the second pack. They've managed to all get through as well. You can see that distance there visually from uh, Perez looking forward. It's about 2.8 seconds. I'll tell you, the boy's got some pace. Oh, as we see, uh, who's that running wide? I think that was... Um, 
It was Kawabe again, running very wide through three. Has got a bit of a taste for the dirt tonight by the looks of it. Uh, Perez can bridge that gap. Look, it was 2.8 as they exited turn one. It's now already down at 2.1. So watch out, folks. This could be a bumper crop as he looks to bring as Julian O'Frey with him. You see O'Frey quietly sitting in the draft of Perez as Perez looks to hunt down the lead pack. Meanwhile, back up front, Kui Turt. He's got uh, Luketa behind him and the two Mavano boys line astern. Geedy making seven positions, if you don't mind, in this 4.5k soft, just a tick under 4.6. Uh, Geedy showing his class, of course, and getting right up there in the action, up seven spots already tonight. Side by side, this time Kui Turt pulls in behind and Geedy just leaves the space. Oh, up the inside behind, it's Lukata by the looks with Tallini. Uh, they're having a red hot crack as I hear more crunches in the background. Uh, but everyone's seemingly getting through okay. Now, nah, Perez. I thought we'd lost him there for a second. Uh, but what's he now? Yeah, why is he so far back? Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, I don't see. Well, oh, hang on. I see a crash here in my telemetry. Let's go see what happened here. That was the crunch I think I heard. So Kawabe san might have come a cropper here. It's always going to be into this braking zone. Oh, he's kicked a bit of dirt in the braking zone, the six car, and then collided with the 12 car of the debutant Reno. And that's oh, that's a very unfortunate one. No malice or intent there. Just picking up a bit of tell me Fitz Johnson gets through. Yes, he does. All right. We can uh, we can live to fight another day. Unfortunate one for Kawabe. He was on for such a great race here tonight. Started in fourth or fifth, I think. Um, oh, what a bummer. All right. So we're side by side up the front straight again. Oh, there's, uh, there's a bit of a gap almost forming now between the front four. If they keep it uh, sensible, they might even get away here. The four car Tallini leading a secondary pack now as they try and squabble to pick up the scraps as the front four of Kui Turt, Luketa, Gidi and Vico look to run away with it. Uh, Perez now, he's about yeah, he's about 2.2 seconds behind and that he's no longer bridging that gap so much as just hanging on at the moment. Uh, interesting to see if he can crack it in the last sort of eight laps. All right, as we go to start on the second half of this one here tonight. Now, we've got uh, Kui Turt leading Luketa and Gidi, the Mavano boys. What team orders are in place? Let's see. We'll have to find out as the laps wind down here. Uh, but these guys putting on a great show already. I thought, again, I thought I'd see more action here in this front pack, but Kui Turt's really been the one who's driving the pace and, and the positions. And... Um, He's really... The other guys are keeping very cool heads. Very cool heads indeed. As side by side they go now. Lika, Luketa uh, leading from Kui Turt and Gidi. He's splitting the two Mivano boys. Oh, and up the inside comes Vico. Vico, uh, the, the teammate, of course, of Danny Blanco, who's also in this race. Side by side now with Gidi. Very dangerous here as they approach turn three. Easy to come a cropper there. Nah, and he lifts out. Smart racing there. Good race IQ there from uh, Vico uh, to give Gidi the run. Because meanwhile, you can see that secondary pack uh, is all over the back of them now. And uh, looking to make a difference as Wade and Licata. Oh, big effort under brakes. Is he big brakes the second, Mr. Licata? He's been learning from Luketa. Uh, about uh, how to get deep in the braking zone. And, oh, I thought I saw an, uh, an, uh, an Iberian Racing School livery in the background. Perez now, he's uh, with O'Frey, and they are 1.7, 1.8 seconds behind. So they've got four tenths in the last lap, and they're looking to work together to get back onto the front pack. Speaking of the front pack... Kui Turt this time round going up the inside uh, of Luketa and Gidi. 
What are these two boys going to do? The two Movano boys, they're not going to get to race until the last lap. I would have thought big breaks from Vico this time round. He gets around the outside. Will, have the, will he have another go here? Nah, giedi has got the better drive out of one, but he's now coming under threat from Tallini. Uh, nah, line astern, and they've got it sort of Nathan Wade now, just ahead of Licata, and Devante is still in this one with Maddock behind him. Of course, Maddock and uh, Snell had an unfortunate coming together. In the breaking zone at turn one of the first race, uh, the warm up race, I should say, and they took out Devantry as well. Leading ANZ driver here tonight is the Cowboy, and he's down in eighth position, but looking to move forward if he can in the closing stages now. Perez, he's got uh, one, he's under 1.8 seconds now, he's 1.7. I'm wondering if they're going to run out of laps. It's about six and a half to go. Uh, they might struggle. Meanwhile, back up front, we've got Kui Turt and Giedi still. Kui Turt really wanting to play a dominant role by the looks as we see uh, Giedi now sitting in P2 ahead of his Mivano teammate. Although Lucchetta, his teammate, immediately steps out to take an inside line into turn one, pick up the draft from the leader and go three wide momentarily as he pulls across in front of his teammate who gives him all the room he needs to get it done as the suspension loads up in the braking zone. Heavy braking from these guys. Heard a bit of crunching in the background. It's Devant here, is it? Well, I'm just seeing there's been... I heard a lot of crunching there and I don't know that it, anyone's dropped out, but... Um, they seem to have got away with that one, although side by side still. Devante looking a little bit secondhand and moving backwards rapidly. Actually, as is Wade, and well, he's off into the never never is uh, Nathan Wade. Uh, but I'm not sure that that was the incident. Um, yeah, he's crashed a bit earlier on. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Coming into turn one, as, as it's always going to be. And I'm looking at Nathan Wade here, the 13. As he, is he going, he, look, he's all on his own there, he's okay. He's coming into that front pack. And he comes across the 17, there it is. And that's in front of Devantia. And Devantia's run a come a cropper as it's all checked up. And that's really, uh, that's really unfortunate. Those guys are right in the, ru in the running for this one. And then three into two doesn't go there. And they've just had a bit of argy-bargy getting away from there. No one looks to be too damaged, although Wade, I think, has gone to the pits since then. Uh, that's an unfortunate one for those guys. So we jump back up front now. We're on lap 14 of 18 here tonight. We've got uh, Kui Turt still leading from Luketa and Gidi. And these guys continuing now on their own because they've got a 2.7 second lead from Likata who's now leading the second pack uh, but he's got something to contend with there he's got Perez all over him uh, with uh, Maddock and Ofray Maddock having dropped back from that front pack after getting caught up in that incident that we just ran through uh, and Ofray now he's uh, on the back of this one uh, but I suggest that uh, these guys are used to elbows out in that front pack, and I would su I would uh, suggest that they're going to struggle now with uh, four laps to go as they cross the line this time round to bridge that gap. So these guys fighting for sixth, but a great drive from Perez, who's up eight spots. Uh, just one more than Ludwig Gidi himself sitting in third at the moment as they come down into turn one at the start of lap 15, just the four laps to go. Uh, Giedi now up seven positions as side by side they go. I imagine it's going to start to get real pretty quickly as these guys look to start to have a crack at taking out the top soft of the week here on a Sunday night lights. As side by side, yeah, this is where it's starting to get real. Side by side through turn three means the, uh, the elbows are out, that's for sure. And uh, those guys are starting to get busy. Uh, Luketa almost uh, half a chance getting away here. Beautifully controlled there. Vico given every bit of opportunity to go uh, line astern there as Giddy would have lifted just enough to pull in behind it. Beautiful driving there from the lead pack. So we see Perez now on the front of the second pack. 
Two and a half seconds is a bridge too far, I'm going to say, in the last uh, three and a half laps. But still, uh, sensational drive. Up six posi uh, nine positions, I should say, uh, with, is Perez. And uh, looking like he's half chance of uh, busting the draft there from Maddock behind him. So meanwhile, Luketa's still leading up front with uh, Kui Turt and Vico. And Gidi now all over the back of him. Tallini doing a great job as well to be sitting in there just half a second off the back of this front pack. Interesting to see if he's, he's willing to settle for a top five. Uh, think he's playing the long game or really wants to get amongst us. Two by two they go around the outside. Kui Turt and the two Mivano boys behind him. Luketa and Gidi. Team orders, I don't think so. <laughs> but we'll see how they go. Vico now side by side uh, with Gidi as they come through turn three once again. And this time it's Vico lifting enough to go line astern. Not quite uh, sheep stations time for those boys with uh, two and a half to go as they come down in through four into five now at this hairpin. Look, when the time comes uh, and it's late in the race, the hairpin will be an opportunity here in the braking zone. Tough to get it done, but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures in the big one. And to see if anyone tries to have a crack at that one. All right, uh, it's Kui Turt from Luketa, Gidi, Vico and Tolini in this front pack. Perez now still two and a half behind, not making the progress that he once was as he's got all the way up from, uh, well, I think he was up from 15th after a terrible qualifying by his standards. He's still only half a second off, but it was not great by his standards. As we see now, Luketa up the inside, Kui Turt taking that familiar defensive line into turn one. It compromises him into turn three if they get the breaking right. Oh, and up the inside goes Gidi. Left the door open is hardly the way to describe it by Kui Turt, but Gidi taking advantage with the switchback. He's not going to get it done this time round, but certainly Luketa is the beneficiary there, his teammate, as he hangs on to P1. Meanwhile, behind them, Behind them, you've got uh, yeah, Perez defending from the 18 car of George Maddock there, uh, hanging on to it as we jump back up front. And we've got, oh, Kui Turt, is he going to have a look up the inside? Oh, very, very tight there. A lot of movement in the braking zone there. He won't be making Giddy happy, I wouldn't have thought. Young Kui Turt. Uh, but they're getting it done as they come out the S's through 7, 8, 9 for the penultimate time this time round. You want to be flat from about here. And grabbing all the way through there in fourth, if you can manage it, you might grab fifth by the end of this short uh, back straight into the final corner at 10 at Paddock Bend. But uh, these guys now a little lift. Maybe a smidge of break if you feel like you want that rotation and away they go. All right, white flag this time round. What are our leaders going to do this time? It's it's Luketa taking a defensive line. Kui Turt, he's looking up the inside. What's Gidi going to do? He's going to make it three wide. Yes, he is. He's going to break deep into the zone, see if he can't get around the outside. Three wide. Oh, they've come a cropper. It's Luketa driving away with it. Vico and Tolini have gone through. It's Kui Turt and... Um, uh, it was Gidi who's uh, dropped it there. We'll go back and have a look at that at the end. But it's uh, now it's Luketa's race to lose uh, with Vico Tolini and Gidi trailing off in the background. Oh, he's given it everything to stay ahead of Perez, who's now all over the back of Gidi, looking for a top four finish, if you don't mind. Up ten positions now is uh, Christian Perez. Meanwhile, the, uh, the move at the hairpin did not eventuate. Vico now doing a sensational job he qualified in third which was a brilliant effort from the iberian now he's all over the back of luketa he might struggle though he can get it done out of the final corner but i'd suggest luketa's too much class potentially Tolini might have picked up a bit of damage he's dropped right off uh Gidi now oh look at the background <laughs> three wide are they no let's go check out our leaders i don't think anyone but luketa's got the drive out although vico's closing it's going to be luketa Luketa rejoins Sunday Night Lights and takes out the victory. Perez from Gidi. Gidi got it in fourth in the end. Perez, Maddock, and Lukata. Oh, my goodness. Someone's launched it into tomorrow. Off to the side there. I think it was Zofrey. Uh He's done well up nine positions <laughs> into P8. Holy dooly. I wasn't expecting that. I know there's a jump there, but I wasn't expecting to see some bloke launch himself into next week. All right, anyone left out there? 
closing down our finishes. Oh, there's one on his lid. That looks like a, a Milo car, yeah. Oh, disappointed for Kawabe too. All right, that's everyone done. Let's go check out our race results, please. Race results. There we go. Excuse me. All right, uh, and I'll just do that. Saturday Night Lights, Season 24, kicked off with a bang. Uh, round one here at Summit Point, Manu Liketa, big breaks himself, back in action. Fantastic to see gentleman and a scholar that he is for Mivano Sim Racing here tonight. Uh, One-plated car, started first, finished first, uh, and I'm wondering if he got the fastest lap as well. No, I don't think he did. Fantastic drive, though, from the Mivano Sim Racing driver. Alexis Vico, fantastic drive. Never seen him that high. I know, he's always got a smile on his face. You can check him out on Twitch. Uh, I'm trying to remember his uh, his channel name, Alex, Alex Inako, A-L-X-I-N-A-K-O, if you check him out. He's be having a big grin on his face now, that's for sure. Uh, finishing in second and rounding out the podium tonight, uh, second Italian driver of Giuseppe Tolini, who just finished fourth in the standings last season overall. Great to see him kick off this one with a podium. Congratulations. Ludwig Giedi, the second of the two Mivano Sim Racing guys here tonight. He's finished fourth after that incident that we might go grab a look at shortly. Christian Perez, what a drive. Class, uh, certainly a class above many in this field, up 10 positions. Started 15th after poor qualifying uh, and finished fifth. George Maddock from UK and I, he's out of, he's finished sixth tonight. Manuel Licata from it Italy uh, in his debut. He's uh, He started seventh and he's finished seventh, the 17th plated car. Uh, a lot of sevens in that. Well done uh, to Licata. Julian O'Frey. Uh, he's back again and finished in eighth for Red Face Racing. Not where he would have finished, but again, uh, didn't qualify strongly, up nine positions, so that's not a bad effort either, starting second last. Uh, Laura Samadio who finished third in the championship last season. He's finished ninth here tonight, the Italian. Danny Blanco from Iberia after that mid-race incident, uh, finishing down in 10th. George Matsushinsky uh, joined us once again. He finished 11th. And Josh Fidge Johnson, the boys forever, the, the leading ANZ driver uh, as the Cowboy came a cropper, unfortunately. But Josh has finished in the points tonight. Congratulations to him. Uh, moving on, the team boss man for Team Milo, a VDR Team Milo, Russell Clark the third apparently, finished in 13th tonight, just out of the points. He was up five spots, so not a bad drive from Russell. Uh, Sam Devantia, the cowboy himself, who was for such a long time in that front pack and through no fault of his own has dropped down to 14th, the Speedy Snails driver. 15th tonight was Alvaro Reyna, who again had another incident. Kawabe-san, kawai so uh, the Japanese driver. Real sad for Kawabe-san. He started, what did he start? I think he started fourth tonight. F fantastic quality. Uh, couldn't back it up in the race, unfortunately. Sam Kui, too, he was all amongst it. Uh, ends up finishing a lap down in 17th. And Nathan Wade, the other retirement here tonight, finished in 18th. All right. While, uh, while I wait uh, for a couple of interviews, or at least one, I just want to check what happened in that final, um, final lap incident. So hang on. We'll go back and have a look here. You can see three and a one just kind of doesn't go, right? What if there's a better angle on that? I think TV3 might be it. There we go. So the guys are heavy on the brakes. They've done pretty well with spacing there. Very, very tight on the inside. I think Kuita probably could have left a bit more room for Luketa, and that was the problem. I think. I don't think he left enough room on the inside for Luketa. He's copped a nudge as a result, and that's put him off into Geedy. So, look, three into one doesn't go, as it turns out, but we probably could have could have seen that. But honestly, that's a racing incident at the end of the day because um, those guys were racing hard and fast, as they say in the classics. Now, we might just uh, get ready for our... For our uh, interviews, because we've got, where is he? 
eighth place finisher here tonight, uh, Mr. Julian O'Frey. Julian, welcome back to Sunday Night Lights. It's uh, it's great to have you here. Tell me, uh, you didn't qualify as well as you were hoping, I'm sure, although honestly, it was only six tenths across the whole field. So um, it was not like uh, you had <laughs> you were too far off, but then you've come up and finished nine spots up the grid. So it must have been uh, a very challenging and interesting drive here tonight. You with me there, Julian? Oh, I heard you briefly. Um, I have a, a problem um, at the hoot lap. Uh, I was black blacked and uh, um, when I returned to, to the pit, um, uh, my uh, my out lap was my first lap, so uh, I uh, I had uh, just uh, one uh, one qualification lap. This is why uh, I was so far. Yeah. yeah, right. That explains it, mate. The uh, they're pretty tough uh, in warming the tires these days, but uh, certainly great to see you drive through the field like you, you did. It looked like for a little while you teamed up with Christian Perez to come through the field a bit. How was it uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Christian? Yeah, okay, um, I work with him, uh, but um, he was a bit faster than me, so um, uh, I'm not sure um, it was really, really good uh, to catch. Uh, maybe maybe I had to, to follow, I don't know. Uh, I will check the, the replay to, to see that. Yeah, no worries, mate. But uh, look, great to see you out there tonight. Uh, up nine positions from that unfortunate qualification. So uh, great drive nonetheless. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank or shout out tonight before we let you go? Um, no, no, no. Um... I want just to, to thank all all, um, all drivers on the, the track uh, who were uh, fair play. Um, no one try uh, stupid things or uh, or things like, like that. Uh, two wides were, were uh, really really clean. Uh, all all was okay, and uh, and I want to thank uh, for your job, uh, Lake Hill Valley. That's all. Thanks, Julian, mate. Always great to see you here, and uh, we look forward to to seeing you out there again in the in the weeks to come. Yep. Yeah, see you next week. Bye bye. There you go, folks. Julian O'Frey uh, joining us here once again. Always have a lot of admiration for someone whose English is not their their first language or their native tongue, and they they still come and join us up here in the commentary booth. Uh, and of course, quality drive here tonight as well. He's a quality driver, so. Um, you know, all the best for Julian uh, in the weeks to come, and hopefully we'll be talking to him uh, up the pointy end, uh, not too far away. So next up, we've got uh, an around an around the grounds report from uh, one B Snell, one of the Aussie ANZ drivers who uh, joins us to give us a bit of a rundown on the second split here tonight, mate. How did you run out there? Oh, it was it was fun. It would have been better if I was up there with the uh, the big boys at the top split, but um, apparently my eye rating is insufficient at the moment, so I think I might need to work on that. But it was a good race. Um, we had some strong Milo representation with uh, myself, Luke Witten, and John Schultz all uh, making the second split, as well as a good friend of the uh, the broadcast, Grebo, who said to say hello. And, Excellent. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, Grebo, myself, Luke Witten, and it was also uh, Javier Martin um, all qualified on the, the front two rows and had a, a little bit of a, a breakaway after Skolty skittled a couple of people into uh, the hairpin on lap three. And uh, then um, Skolty kind of got, uh, sorry, not Skolty, um, Witten got caught up with uh, Javier a little bit, let myself and Grebo get away. We just played nice and built a gap and with two laps to go, went, all right, now it's now all to play for. And we spent the last two laps side by side and Grabo got me by 22 thousandths of a second across the line. So uh, it was a great race. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we do it, isn't it? You know, to get out there and have a have fun like that with your mates. And if it comes off like that, all the better. So sounds like it was fun down there anyway, like the good old days as I might, I might reflect, eh? 
Yeah, yeah. Basically, the second split of SNL tonight was like the uh, the olden days Monday Night Lights, where it was Grebo was the token <laughs> European fella, and there was a whole bunch of Aussies in there. And now we've just been overrun by um, all all of our Euro- European compatriots over there. And oh, they put on a good show, though, don't they? It's um, I really got to work on that I rate again, get back up into the top split with these guys because it's just such exciting racing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully that's not too far away. We see some more, uh, some green liveries up there in the top split as well. Because it's great to see someone like Luke Whitten out there. Uh, one of, of course, the top A and Z drivers, uh, given half a chance. And uh, if we can get him back in there with the rest of you guys, it'd be great to see. But thanks for coming in, mate. I do appreciate it. Anyone who'd like to give a shout out to? Oh, shout out to you as always for putting on the broadcast, uh, riding solo tonight as well. So um, I know it's a little bit extra work. So I'm sure you did a cracker job of it, and there was no <laughs> flubs, and you 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 just sailed smoothly through. Um, and I'll I'll look forward to watching the broadcast. But of course, thanks to um, to all the guys in the Discord for having chat and having some fun, and it makes the racing way more exciting. And uh, I'll see you guys next week, hopefully it's Sonoma. So it'll either be the worst strength of field again in the in the history or the best. <laughs> One of the two. It's gotta be somewhere in there, right? Yeah, that's it. All right, mate, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you talk to you next time. Cheers, Alex. There you go, folks. Uh, one B Snell, who's joining us uh, from the second split, but always great to talk to Ben. He's a great character, great driver, can steer. Just need to get his eye racing up. But uh, he's our rating, I should say, up, and then we'll uh, we'll enjoy seeing him and some of the other regulars uh, in the top split before long, uh, we hope. But, folks, that might do us uh, after tonight's event. Thank you, everyone, for joining us both on track and off. It's been great to, to get back in. Hopefully, my partner in crime, the chaotic one himself, will be back next week if we can get his tech issues sorted, uh, and it will be all the better for it. But until then, check us out. At all these kind of places, everything top splits on your screen, of course, at the moment. The Discord is where the community is and where we do the, the broadcast and the interviews from. All, all the information for the series is kept there as well. How to get your name in the overlays properly, all that sort of stuff. Great to see a couple of folks get that sorted tonight, and it certainly adds to the experience. Top Split YouTube is where you find this and every other MNL and SNL race replay, the Top Split YouTube channel. Go check it out. Top Split TV and Corey Has No Life is, of course, where you'll find Corey and myself. Uh, but make sure also from Wednesday uh, this week, you check out the Locked On iRacing podcast where you'll find the SNL wrap in amongst all the other exciting goings on in the uh, Australian New Zealand Club. All sorts of iRacing news, views and results there with the Locked On boys. Uh, and yours truly will be going over some of the events of SNL from this week. Uh, this from this Wednesday. Go check out their back catalogue too. There's some good stuff in there. But folks, that'll do us. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, and until next time, I've been your host, Alice McKellar, and I will say ciao for now. <laughs>